Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Venkana English Guru, my friends. Yes, friends, is my voice audible? If it is audible, show me thumbs up so that we'll continue our class. Yes, good evening, good evening. Friends, we are going to talk about a very interesting topic that is John Milton. And uh, the whole class is going to be John Milton. And uh, where I am going to talk about few aspects with regard to John Milton, works of John Milton, introduction to John Milton, themes and styles, poetic techniques that were employed by John Milton and uh, short summary of john milton uh, john milton's uh, the paddle lost and a few uh, critical comments on john milton by various writers so that we are going to talk about as part of this yes john milton and was born in bread street london on 9th december 1608 okay when we talk about and he is from london the son of composer and father name was also john milton and mother sara jeffrey so parents john milton and sara jeffrey he was an english poet and polemist and man of letters and civil servant for the commonwealth of england under oliver cromwell because as he was a strong supporter of uh, this puritans and protestants in 1625 milton graduated with a ba in 1629 and uh, and and in 1629 he did his ma preparing to become an anglican priest milton obtained his masters of degree on july 1632 so both he did b and ma from cambridge university and just some information with regard to as he was from london parent john milton and sara and jeffrey and poet and polemist and a scholar civil servant during the uh, the puritan interregnum and who was a post graduate in english and was probably rusticated for quarreling and as a student he was also rusticated from the university because had as he had a quarrel with bishop william chapel so he had that nature at cambridge milton was on good terms with edward king okay very close friend of john milton whom he later wrote lesidas on his death and his close friend edward king and on the death of edward edward king and lesidas a, pa a popular past elegy written by john milton and also befriended anglo american dissident and theologian roger williams another important uh, expert and the person who spoke about the importance of religion at the time because and john milton's age was all about the controversy between religion whether anglicanism was popular or protestantism is popular and as there was a con controversy and between these two and hence next in june 1642 milton married a 16 year old bride mary powell so mary powell and 1642 just you can imagine he was 28 29 and and he got married to a 16 year old bride mary powell and milton and his first wife mary powell had four children anne mary john and deborah okay four important children next you can see on 12th november 1656 milton was married again and catherine woodcock second wife catherine woodcock okay she died on 3rd february 1658 so at a very only they had a real and uh, the marital relationship for only just for two years and milton married for a third time on 24 december uh, february 1662 elizabeth menshall she is very important for us because in the as a part of our net examination and as a part of our jldl examination who assisted who assisted remember who assisted john milton while writing the paddle lost this is the repeated question several times it was asked you need to remember and his third wife elizabeth menshall mary powell catherine woodcock and elizabeth menshall just have a simple code and pwm okay powell woodcock and minshall you can have a small code for that 
and the niece of Thomas Minchel, a wealthy apothecary and philanthropist in Manchester. And he is actually named Lady of Christ. This is just like his nickname, it's just like his pen name. And he is actually called Lady of Christ based on because of his figure, because of his facial expressions. So, very important, my friends. And two nephews. This is very important. Who is the biographer of uh, John Milton? For this, you need to answer. And the two nephews, sons of Milton's sister, Annie, Edward and John Phillips. Edward and John Phillips. Edward was Milton's first biographer. Who is the first biographer who wrote the biographical accounts of John Milton? The first one was Edward Phillips. And he was acclaimed as an early Whig. Whig, as I told you. During the restoration, the two, uh, two important political parties were established. One is Tory and second one is Whig. And was acclaimed claimed as an early Whig. Whig. And supporters of uh, Protestants, supporters of the Puritans, supporters of the Commonwealth, supporters of the Parliament, and Tory and Anglicans, Catholics of the time. Next, while the high Tory Anglican minister, Luke Melbourne, lumped Mil Milton with other agents of darkness. So who called John Milton agents of darkness and Anglican minister? And uh, such as John Knox, George Buchanan, Richard Baxter, Algernon Sidney, and John Locke. All these were, and uh, according to the Anglican minister, agents of uh, darkness. Because as they were spreading the importance of Anglican and importance of Puritanism, Protestantism, supporting the parliament, support, supporting the commonwealth, and where he was able to make this. Became blind. This is very important, my friends. And several times this bit was asked. John Milton became blind at the age of, very, very important. He became blind at the age of 43. So 43. John Milton became blind at the age of 43. And this saved John Milton and not being a part of, not being under the bars in a prison. So he was saved because of this. Because Charles the two, after he be, and after he became the ruler, and he and uh, punished a number of Puritans and Protestants, supporters of the Parliament and supporters of the Oliver Cromwell. But and many many Carolyn poets, many uh, different poets during. Uh, the early re restoration period were imprisoned and this saved John Milton. Otherwise, he would be also under prison. And his third wife assisted him for composing his greatest epic, The Pad of the Lost. That is what very important. Who is the third wife of uh, John Milton, Elizabeth Minchel? Remember this. Because all these are net oriented, set oriented, JLDL examination bits, my friends. John Milton became blinded the age of who assisted John Milton while uh, while rewriting while uh, writing the Pad of the Lost and the Pad of the Regained and his third wife Elizabeth Minchel and who is the first biographer Edward Phillips okay some little bit introduction with regard to John Milton next what are the popular works of John Milton only these are all the important works of John Milton my friends Allegro Il Penseroso these are very important because Companion poems. Both are both are regarded companion poems of John Milton. This also this was also asked several times in the history of net. And what are the companion poems of John Milton? Allegro and Il Penseroso. And a mask presented a mask. Kamo. This is also asked. Which of the following is a mask composed by John Milton and Kamo? Remember this. It's a mask. What is mask? I told you. It's a stage performance. It's a stage. It's a performance that is uh, specifically designed for the court, for the king, for the and uh, sophisticated people of the court. And 1638, listed as the popular pastorology written on the death of uh, and Edward King, his friend. Poems of John Milton, both English and Latin. This is very important. On the late massacre in Piedmont. On the late, late massacre in Piedmont, the following is a poem by John Milton. This was asked a couple of times. And Pad is lost, you know, 1667 when it was first published, how many cantos? Just 10 cantos. And Pad again, it's a sequel. How many cantos? Just 4 cantos. 
and what is canto section samson agnostis very very important my friends i told you samson agnostis this is the closed drama composed by john milton and where you can find dialogue stay settings everything where the dialogues are read by the characters not performed on the stage one of the major important closed dramas composed by john milton and this includes chorus i told you samson agnostis by john milton and atlanta and caledon is a film one from which sun born by pv shelley murder in the cathedral by and uh, you can see john ts eliot the dynast and uh, thomas hardy popular closet plays where the writers the dramatist employed the use of chorus in them and poems upon several occasions the popular poems companion what the following are the companion poems the following is a sonnet the following is the most important literary epic paradise lost sequel to paradise lost and the following is the popular closet play and in which of the following play or work of uh, work of john milton used chorus samson agnostis and the following is the popular pastoral elegy lycidas lycidas is written on the death of dash edward king all these are very important my friends next you can see these are prose prose one and essays and as i told you restoration is the beginning of rise of essays rise of prose beginning of prose where john milton is also very popular for writing a number of pamphlets a number of essays a number of political satires and some of them of reformation and of political epos and episcopacy and very very important one is doctrine and discipline of devotes and another important one of education very very important one adio pitchika very very important this is and this the subtitle is freedom of speech this was about because this is the time of civil war and the theaters were closed in 1642 and this adio pitchika was written to talk about importance of speech and freedom next friends you can see and uh, some of the other important uh, prose works of john milton and you can see and the ready and easy way of establish a free commonwealth and history of britain this is very important couple of times this was asked this is written by several writers okay next friends you can see and uh, when we talk about his uh, poetry and his first published poem was on shakespeare remember on shakespeare it's a poem that is composed by to shakespeare it is written by ben johnson on shakespeare on time so these types of poems were first written by uh, john milton on shakespeare anonymously included in the second folio edition that appeared in 1632 you know we already discussed first folio 1623 second 1632 and third 1664 as a part of second folio where john milton composed a poem to praise shakespeare that is on shakespeare remember this and kamu as we been talking about it's a mask kamu argues what is this all about this is for virtuousness of temperance and chastity chastity the importance of temperance the importance of one's chastity and virtues importance of your virtues milton's first foray into and polemics was of reformation touching church discipline in england followed by an prelatical epo and episcopacy his experience and discussions with educational reformer samuel hartlib this may be important led him to write in 1644 and a short tract of education urging a reform of the national university so of education it's all about reforming the universities of england and where there was a discussion with samuel hartlib and where he composed this next important thing aryo pitchika we been talking about i am giving you some short summary aryo pitchika very popular milton not only aligns himself with the parliamentary cause in 1852 sonnet 16 in praise of cromwell our chief of men cromwell our chief of men okay this is another important sonnet 16 written by john milton so sonnet 16 which talks about cromwell and our chief of men his blindness forced him to dictate his words and prose to and amunes 
one of whom was with andrew marvel so andrew marvel when we talk about apart from elizabeth winchell who assisted john milton who assisted john milton in the process of writing when he became blind to write job sam prepared the lost or padded regained or samson agnostics and it was andrew marvel andrew Mar- andrew marvel was also imprisoned but but he got only a few years of imprisonment after charles ii and in his 1641 treatises of reformation and i think this is not required next friend see milton called the areopagitica milton called the areopagitica the liberty to know this is what i been mean, liberty to know to utter and to argue freely according to the conscience above all liberties this is the popular one several time this was asked in the history of net examination remember so the liberty to know to utter and to argue freely according to one's conscience according to the conscience of of an individual above all liberties milton wrote the doctrine and discipline of divorce in 1643 at the beginning of english civil war because all the issues were under the control of the church under the control of the bible which milton did not like because and uh, when he got married to and his first, first wife mary powell and he had a lot of problems and uh, and to talk about those problems very composed of this political essay political and philosophical essay next you can see what are the themes what is the style that has been adopted by john milton mainly we need to give priority to magnum opus the process of using blank words blank words epics because very employed the use of blank words use of iambic pentameter lines and in the poems like the pad of the lost the pad of the regent and lycidas and very popularly he composed so see milton's use of blank words milton's use of blank words friends we've been talking about what is blank words in my previous videos i told you i taught you a lot and and grandiloquence of wise and vision and peculiar diction and phraseology influence the later poets the kind of phrases that that were used by john milton the kind of blank words the kind of grand use of language grand use of thoughts influenced a number of writers after for example and J- william blake who composed and for joas and jerusalem two popular epics were written by milton which were Im- influenced by john milton and hyperion which is written by john keats again you can find out the influence of john milton and said isaac watts in 1734 mr milton is the esteemed the parent and author of blank words among us who is the father of the using blank words miltonic words might be and so the and he some of the people they they, they renamed blank words in the name of miltonic words might be synonymous for a century with uh, blank words as poetry following to milton english poetry from pope to john keats exhibited steadily increasing attention to the and connotative imaginative poetic and value of words connotative meanings imaginative meanings so from pope to john keats most of them have applied the magnum opus the blank words or the miltonic words in the process of composing a lot of poems by this so that is the major impact that john milton created on these writers for using blank words miltonic words blank words came to be recognized medium for religious works remember according to john milton you need to use you need to use and blank words to talk about religious works that's what you can see milton it's a epic written by william blake for joas it's a it's an epic written by william blake and uh, hyperion the fall of hyperion people say and uh, these are the popular epics which were composed and which are mainly examples for religious works composed in the form of blank words and for translations of the classics for example iliad odyssey which were translated by pope where they were translated and into english by using blank words by alexander pope and all the works that were composed by pope and were composed only in blank words unrhymed lyrics like collins 
Ode to Evening. And uh, in the meter of Milton's translations of Horace Ode to Pera. So Milton translated one of the works of Horace Ode to and Pera were not uncommon after 1740. Next, a second aspect of Milton's blank words was the use of unconventional rhyme scheme. So, you know, blank words where you don't use any rhyme scheme. Blank words refers to ambic metameter lines without any rhyme scheme. So, unconventional rhyme scheme, not one individual rhyme scheme that is being followed. And Pope used diction, a Pope used diction of paradise lost in his Homer translation by lyric poetry of Gray and Collins was frequently criticized for their use of obsolete words of the Spencer and Milton. And where Thomas Gray and Collins. Thomas Gray is also one of the major important poets who used a lot of blank words. But he was and influenced by Edmund Spencer and John Milton and William Collins. These are the two writers and who were greatly influenced by John Milton and his works and his use of blank words. Next friends. Next, what are the popular awards that were given to John Milton? Pop popular dialogues. William Harley's 1796 biography called him the greatest English author. William Harvey called the greatest English author in English. Next, John Dryden in 1677 began the trend of describing Milton as a poet of sublime, remember. The poet of sublimity. Who called John Milton as the poet of sublime? Sublimity, the great thought, great ideas, the pattern lost, the pattern regained, all these are the greatest poems which are for the humanity. So you are the poet of the sublimity according to John Dryden. William Blake considered Milton the major English poet. Blake placed Edmund Spencer as Milton's precursor and saw himself as Milton's poetical son. Very, very important. So Milton, Blake, William Blake, the mystic poet of uh, who connected the concepts of neoclassicism to romanticism and he considered milton the major english poet blake placed edmund spencer edmund spencer not superior to john milton according to blake and and he himself called as the as milton's poetical son i became the poetical son of john milton it's a statement that is attributed to attributed to himself by J william blake in his Milton, Milton, see, remember, Milton, it's an epic, it's a poem. It's an epical poem. It's an epic. This is, uh, it's an epic which is written by William Blake, where Blake uses Milton as a character. Remember, this is very important. Milton is a poem that is written by William Blake. Milton is a character that is created by William Blake. Milton is a character that is created by William Blake in the dash poem, Milton. Very, very important, my friends, all these are. Next, you can see Edmund Burke, you know, we've been and uh, talking about at the end of neoclassicism. Edmund Burke was a theorist for the sublime and he regarded Milton's descriptions of hell as exemplary sublimity, as an aesthetic concept. See, where he describes hell in a great way. So description of hell, description of pandemonium, description of heaven, description of the fallen angels, description of uh, the sun, description of uh, the garden of Eden, description of uh, Adam and Eve. If you know, that's it. You know uh, every part of the paddle lost. It's enough. So after reading the paddle lost, Edmund Burke said you and after reading the description of the he heaven and hell or pandemonium, and where he regarded, you are a very popular poet of sublimity. And for Burke, it was to set alongside mountain tops, a storm at sea, an infinity, and some dialogues made by Edmund Burke. The romantic poets valued his exploration of blank words, but for the most part rejected. Because romantic poets, they did not like the use of following the, uh, the old trend. They wanted their own style to be invented. Hence, Usually, not uh, romantic poets did not only reject Milton, they rejected all the classical poets. Instead, they went on using for traditionalism, innovation in terms of literature, not simply following the old rules. We'll talk about it later, later. William Wordsworth began his sonnet. So, William Wordsworth wrote a wonderful sonnet. That, the title of the sonnet is London 1802. Remember, London 1802, it's a sonnet written by Wordsworth. And in that, 
this poem begins with the first line is Milton, though should not be living at this hour. Very, very important, my friends. This was asked several times in the history of net set JLDL exams. Milton, though should not be living at this hour. And this is the beginning line of Dash poem, London 1802. This, this is the line that is created by Wordsworth. Very, very important, my friends. And modeled the prelude and his own blank words a pick on the paddle lost. This is what very important. What is the source for writing the prelude and the popular epic written by Wordsworth, the paddle lost? What is the source for writing the fall of Hyperion to John Keats, the paddle lost? What is the source for writing Milton, the epic written by William Blake and the paddle lost? Like there are many sources we'll be talking about. Very, very important points, my friends. Next, when we see John Keats found the yoke of Milton's style, Milton's style uncongenial, and he exclaimed that Miltonic words cannot be written but in an artful or rather artistic humor. So, a statement made by Keats. The title of Philip and Philbans is Dark Material Trilogy derived from the quotation is Dark Materials to create more words not required and uh, spoken. And, and our greatest public poet. So simply you can remember this. And according to Philip Fullman, and Milton is considered to be our greatest public poet. T.S. Eliot believed that of no other poet is to so difficult to consider the poetry of simply as poetry without our and theological and political dispositions making unlawful entry. So if you do not know the theological aspects, it is very difficult to understand the poetry composed by Milton, it's a statement made by T.S. Eliot. Next, you can see my friends. And now I'm giving you some basic knowledge about the paddle lost. Previously, during as a part of the restoration period, where I gave you some little bit knowledge about the period and the paddle lost to justify the ways of God to man, the major theme, the fall of man, and how Adam and Eve were cheated, and how these two were cheated and thrown out of the Garden of Eden is nothing but the paddle lost. So what is this paddle? And this information that I am going to talk about plays an important role to understand the background for writing the paddle lost. I am not talking about theme. I am not giving you something. I am making you to think. Next, Milton's magnum opus. Magnum opus, greatest work. Greatest work, the blank words epic poem, the paddle lost was composed by blind and impoverished Milton from 1658 to 1667. First edition 1667 and second edition 1664 when it was first published 10 volumes, 10 cantos and second 12 cantos, cantos you know. The poem and what could be the theme? The poem reflects his personal despair. It's all about sadness, sorrow of John Milton. Why? What made him and having a lot of despair? Because 1667, what happened before that, we need to think. And during, because he was an active member of Protestants, and he was also a part of Puritans, Protestants, fought for Commonwealth and, and uh, Parliament. But what happened after the death of Cromwell? Again, the intellectuals of England invited Charles II to come forward and take the throne, and he came back and became the rule, ruler. So, which means, what John Milton expected before 1660 was paradise. But after Charles II, who came forward and became the ruler and started exploiting, creating the same old rules that were already previously created by, created during Renaissance. Hence, what the kind of paradise that, that he expected, which is lost. That is what the title. So, failure of revolution. Yes, the failure of revolution because they could not find another important leader and who can be a kind of replacement to Oliver Cromwell. They could not find out. So, what happened again? They had to and re-invite Charles II. So, failure of revolution. What revolution? Puritan revolution. Protestant revolution. And yet affirms an ultimate optimism in human potential. That is what the paddle lost is all about. Next, Milton's, Milton followed up Paddle Lost with its sequel, Paddle's Regained. And he also wrote a Paddle's Regained, it's a sequel, and Paddle's Regained when 
Next published alongside the tragedy, Samson Agnostis in 1671. Okay, this is very important. It's a tragedy. As I told you, close the drama, it's a tragedy. Next, just before his death in 1674, Milton supervised. Milton supervised a second edition of the Paddle Lost, accompanied by an explanation of why the poem rhymes not and preparatory words by Andrew Marwell. Who wrote the preface to the Paddle Lost? This is very important. Who wrote the preface to the Paddle Lost? Andrew Marwell. Okay, very important. Who assisted in the process of composing the Paddle Lost and his wife, third wife, Elizabeth Menchel. Next, and he also included why the poem rhymes not. Because as a, as a poem of blank words, where you don't find rhyme scheme. Samuel Johnson, very important. Criti critical uh, comments made by Dr. Johnson. Samuel Johnson praised Paddle Lost as a poem with and which with respect to design may claim the first place. With respect to performance, the second among the production of the human mind. Okay, though Tory and recipient of royal patronage, described Milton's politics as those of an acrimonious and surely republican. So, has he composed this poem only to talk about the political thoughts of John Milton? Most of the intellectuals, they don't talk, they don't make comments against government, against politics, against the social problems. They indirectly make comments. So the battle lost helped John Milton and say and express his thoughts, his inner thoughts indirectly on the government, on the politics. Next, in battle lost, battle again, Samson Agnostis. Remember, my friends, these are very important. Mounts the end of the godly com commonwealth. Paddle lost, paddle regained, uh, and Samson Agnostis. So all these talk about, deal with the end of the glory commonwealth. The commonwealth is gone. This commonwealth is nothing but the paradise, according to Milton. The Garden of Eden may allegorically reflect the commonwealth. Milton's view of England's recent fall from grace and Samson, Samson's blindness and captivity mirroring Milton's own lost sight and maybe a metaphor for England's blind acceptance of Charles II. This is what very important. England blindly accepted again Charles II and would be the king because they did not think about the consequences that and would be going that would would in place after he becomes a king because and as he was and he wanted to take revenge against the death of his father child the one who was bearded and he ran away from England in 1649 after the Puritans Protestants uh, killed him beheaded him and uh, when again he was invited then and uh, this was not accepted by many of the humanists but he had to accept because he became blind that's why maybe a metaphor, maybe a comparison, a metaphor of England's blind acceptance of Charles II. This is what the major idea behind the paddle lost and Samson Agnostis and the, the paddle regained as king. And illustrated the paddle lost is and uh, mortalism, the belief that the soul lies and dormant after the body dies. And in 1695, Patrick Hume became the first editor of the paddle lost. This is also very important. Who first edited the Paddle Lost? And Patrick, hmm, remember. Next, uh, providing an extensive apparatus of annotation and commentary, particularly chasing down allusions. In 1732, the classical scholar Richard Bentley offered a corrected version of the Paddle Lost. Corrected in 1732. Very important information, my friends. And there was an early partial translation of the Paddle Lost. And the Paddle Lost was translated into German by Theodor Hack. It was also translated into German. Samuel Johnson wrote numerous essays on the Paddle Lost. Milton was included in his Lives of Most of Eminent English Poets, which was composed. Next, Keats of that Paddle Lost was a beautiful and grand curiosity, but his own in unfinished attempt. Epic poetry, Hyperion, was unsatisfactory to the author because it had too many Miltonic inversions. Inversion 
friends this is also asked several times in the inversion change in word order it's a figurative expression change in word order for example i can say home and they have brought the uh, debt home instead of that you can say home they brought the varied debt okay home they brought the varied debt you can say they brought the varied debt home this is the right structure but poetically and alpha law tennyson said home they brought the varied debt this type of changing the order of the words inversion for example if i say and uh, i love radha somebody says radha i love this type of uh, changing word order which you can say inversion because it was couple of times asked in the history of net next uh, kids and uh, where this is a discussion the mad woman in the attic this is very important the mad woman in the attic it's a popular novel gothic novel composed by sandra gilbert and susana gabba note that mary shelley's and the novel frankenstein is in in the view of many critics one of the key romantic readings of the pad is lost so the in the mad woman that is sandra gilbert and susan gabbard noted that mary shelley's novel frankenstein is in the view of many critics one of the key romantic readings of the pad is lost so the process of reading frankenstein which is written by mary shelley it is just like a reading of the pad is lost so like that difficult the text the pad is lost is okay next you can see the victorian age witnessed what are the comments of victorian and with influenced john eliot thomas hardy particularly inspired by milton's poetry and biography these fr lewis where i spoke about fr lewis and he was the one who coined the word great tradition i think i made a video on new criticism you can watch it and it gives you at least one mark one bit two marks you will get if you watch for 10 minutes the common pursuit and responded to the points made by eliot the study of milton coal could be no help so this is a statement made by fr lewis the study of milton could be no help next it was only a hindrance by by arguing as if it were a matter of deciding not to study milton so who said the study of milton could be no help fr lewis next the problem rather to escape from an influence that was so difficult to escape from because it was unrecognized and belonging and it did the climate of habitual and natural harold bloom and this fellow becomes a part of a theory of anxiety so it's a type of reading it's a theory of anxiety of influence it's a term coined by harold bloom very very important who coined the word theory of anxiety of influence so the, for example you you do not know whether without reading the book you get some idea and because the book the title or the prediction the source before the book is published before you read the book you develop a certain ideas about that about it that feeling which which you can say hara and theory of anxiety of influence which is coined by harold bloom it's a type of reading so harold bloom in the anxiety of influence wrote that milton is the central problem in any theory and the history of poetic influence in english so the major problem is milton and his poetry that started creating a lot of problems because to understand poetry first you should know milton according to harald bloom okay this is what i wanted to talk about in our today's discussion my friends and we'll be talking about two more authors and as milton was very important for us and i spoke, i took a lot of time and before you leave like our video and i made another video on new criticism literary theory you can also watch it and it will definitely give you two marks minimum two marks okay friends right like our video and we'll meet tomorrow same time please explain about phonetics and it's very important to me sir please consider my request yes i will also take phonetics but not today yes i will take uh, on sunday don't worry